Hey, Sushi. Are you there? Hey, Brian. How's it going? You're not gonna believe this, but I'm in a big mess again. This is serious, Sushi. I need help. Okay. Calm down. You can count on me. What's happening? Well, I guess I should start from the top. Here's what happened. A few days ago, Gina and I were on vacation in Hawaii. You know, sun, sand, daiquiris, the hula. Anyway, the thing is that Gina wanted to go to Tiki Falls on Mala Island. So, even though I didn't feel like it, we got up early one morning to go on our ill-fated little day trip. So tired. Come on, man. I bet we're gonna have an amazing time. If you say so. Come on. It'll be awesome. Come on, don't tell me you've never dreamed of seeing the waterfalls and the Tiki Temple. Platypus Tours, huh? Couldn't you find a more upscale agency? I called a few others, but they all told me their flights to Mala Island were temporarily canceled for some reason. That's weird. Oh, don't be such a worrywart. A really kind old man at Platypus told me there was no problem. We better get moving. The pilot is expecting us on the beach at 8 o'clock sharp. Kids, sure is a fine morning, isn't it? 
<laughs> just perfect for flying over Zamala Island. I'm telling you, you're just gonna love them Tiki Falls and Temple. They are, like you kids say, totally awesome. Don't take this the wrong way, sir, but aren't you a bit age-challenged to be flying a plane? Brian, don't you think that was a bit rude? Forgive him, Otto. I'm sure you're a first-class pilot. Don't worry, hotcakes. I'm used to dealing with smart Alex like him. And don't you worry, dude. This old bird's wings are still a-flapping. So, let's get a move on and fly over to Mala Island. I can't wait to get there. Brian, cheer up that grumpy face and stop worrying. Okay. By the way, Otto, that hydroplane doesn't look like it's compliant with Hawaiian transportation safety standards. Oh, I assure you, there's no reason to fret. This sweet purring machine will keep you safer than Air Force One. <laughs> Oh, breakdown. God. Somehow I knew this wouldn't have a happy ending. One, Come on, me. hurry! You have to jump! There must be some other way! Are you sure Otto kicked the bucket? He's flown to bluer skies, no doubt about it. And there's only one parachute. So get the thing on, because I'm opening the door. Well, let's jump together. I am not leaving you here in a crashing plane! No, Gina. The parachute won't hold us both. I can manage to land this contraption, but it's silly for both of us to risk our lives. No! I never jump without you! Hurry up, Gina. We'll see each other on the ground soon. I promise. Plane. We were about to crash. Man, I, I can't believe I saved my skin this time. My poor body aches, but I don't think anything's broken. Just a few scratches. Ah! Oh! Otto! Where could he be? How weird. Otto is gone. I don't know. Maybe he was thrown from the plane when we crashed. Poor little devil. I feel awful for him. But he could have chosen some other time to fly the coop. I really get irked by people who make drastic decisions without consulting anyone else. I seem to have crashed in quite a lush area. Well, the first thing I should do is find Gina. I saw from the plane that she was falling over a lake. I hope she didn't have any trouble swimming ashore to safety. She's probably searching for me, too. I'll be needing our backpacks before I set off to see where we've landed. Oh, man. They're not here either. 
nothing. They vanished without a trace. What a bummer. They must have flown out when we crashed. Well, I'll just have to make do with what I have. It looks like a bag. Ready. I'll hide behind here. Well, at least the worst part is over. Now I just have to keep on climbing. Wait. What is this doing on a lost island? What's going on here? What was it? Nothing more and nothing less than a military camp. Can you believe it? It's not that weird, Brian. I bet they were just doing maneuvers. You're wrong, Sushi. In the beginning, that's kind of what I thought, too. The soldiers had most likely seen Gina falling, so I headed for the camp to see whether they would help me. But it didn't turn out to be as easy as just going down to the lake, meeting up with her, and ending the day trip with a pina colada. Nope. The accident turned out to be nothing compared to what was in store for me. Things were about to get worse. Much worse. Well, here I am at last. I never thought I'd make it. I hope the hike was worth it, and those soldiers know something about Gina. Freeze! Hands behind your head! But I just... I said hands up, mister! Okay, okay. I should try. One moment, my colonel. Thank you, Felton. You, come here, please. And the mine will do you. Mr... Colonel, I should try. Uh-huh. The gun has you. I've taken note, my colonel. Your name? Brian Basco. Well, Mr. Basco, wait here. Mr. Uh, what's his face? Wishes to speak with you, my colonel. Who? Uh, tell him I'm asleep. 
flower pot. But he can hear you speaking right now, my colonel. I must be speaking in my sleep, flower pot. No, daddy, you're more of a snoring type. Flower pot, that memory of yours is worse than a senile old general's. Get it through that thick skull of yours that there are no mommies or daddies in the army. Get over here a minute. I need to explain something. And pull those shirt tails right out of your pants. You look like a mama's boy. Look here, Lester. Why do you think I call you Flower Pot? To belittle you? No. It's such an outlandish surname that nobody will suspect it's fake. If the troops knew I sired a dim-witted boob like you, they'd lose their confidence in me, and I'd be shafted. You get it, son? Yeah, I'll keep inspecting the island. I'll try to find that cove Loki Lani told me about. Maybe her friends can help me out. Well, unless I'm lost, this must be them. And I'm willing to bet the guy with the surfboard is Knife. I'm gonna go check it out. Hey, you're Knife, right? Sure am, Mike. Have we met? Actually, I haven't. But I've heard about you. Gnarly, mate. My fame back at the University of California remains. I'm not surprised, though. After so many years trying to finish school, even the professors know me. No. Lokilani's the one who mentioned you. Lokilani's one hot babe, eh? She's like totally for my bones, mate. But don't tell Kai or he'll go aggro. Okay. Hey, I haven't introduced myself. My name is... I heard that, bro. You just told Brian that Lokilani thinks you're the kind. And no one's gonna swallow that, bro. He is, like, totally full of himself sometimes. He thinks the fact that some shark chowed down on his paw is enough to impress a Betty like... Wait, what did Lokalani say about me? Not much. She just said you're crazy about surfing. How could I not? I was born in Byron Bay. Where? Byron Bay, in Australia, mate. The place with the bitchinest airs on the planet, buddy boy. Thing is, when I was a kid, I didn't like surfing. I was all into underwater diving. California's where I got all hyped on surfing, but crikey, over there in Cali, it's majorly packed. You know you gotta reserve a wave at least two days in advance? No, I didn't. Hard to believe. I'm telling you, and don't think that means you get to ride it alone. Nah, -uh, they rent it out to so many mates at once, you feel like you're surfing in a public toilet. So, of course you decided to come here for the peace and quiet. For Kai, too. When I was a freshman in surfing sciences, I saw him do a demo in a video. And he was so gnarly that I dropped out of college to become a student. Kai rules, mate. People say he's a bum just because he spends 16 hours a day resting. But all the masters have to meditate. I guess that video was recorded before he lost his leg, right? Negative, mate. The most awesome thing is that his mastery's greater with that iron leg than most people with... Hey, you're not trying to get him to give you classes, are you? Don't worry. Surfing's not my thing. You're not into surfing? Whoa, what's up with that? I knew there were some freaks out there, but... So, what brings you to... Time. I bet he won't notice. Mine. I sure hope O'Connor doesn't notice it's missing. Now's my chance. It has all the power I need. And then some. I'll just use it for a sec. And he probably won't notice. Well, it seems like O'Connor is none the wiser, but... That way I'll tie up all my loose ends, because you never know, I may use it again. Just in time, O'Connor's coming back.
I'll just be sliding back over to where I was. A mission uh, accomplished. Did you hear anything strange while you were up there, soldier? Just some vehicles off in the distance, sir. But allow me to correct you. You climb a tree to see, not to hear, sir. All right, O'Connor. At ease. Man, this thing is already moving! <laughs> Try to get the long-tailed troublemaker to go under there, grab a token, and give it to me? That would rank number one on any list of outlandish ideas, but in my particular case, I've done none of your things, and they've worked out in the end. Knowing that lemur's nasty ways, I doubt this'll work. But times are desperate. <laughs> Come on, little guy. Bring a pretty token to nice old Uncle Brian. That's it, you lovable furball. In you go. I wonder if he's actually following my instructions or lunching on sand crabs. Hello? Good primate. Hey, wait! More whiskey, you sauced little scamp? <laughs> no? What now? Beer. This is insane! Well, I guess I have no choice but to find my alcoholic lemur a brewski. Well, wasn't that fun? Sure. Hey, I'm heading back to the bar. I don't like to leave Aolani alone for long. Looks like it came out nice. Perfect. You can tell from a mile away that those bodies are fake, but I like it anyway. Mosey along, civilian. Voila. Guinea Papa Moa's poultry reviving spell. Hold bird carefully and remove feathers. Take two lemons, one mango, three coconuts, and a millstone. And stick them up the bird's wazoo. Firmly grip a sharp knife and dice the bird into small pieces, as if preparing a chicken salad sandwich. Then bring to a slow boil until bird bursts back to life. Stay still, birdie. Did it work? I did it. Man, Kai, unbelievable. I'm taking it straight to Lokilani, in case it has a relapse. I'm a true kahuna. Knife's gonna freak. See you later, pal. Okay, bra. Ipili mao napo maika i meoe. I was wrong about you, Kaimi. You are a deer. Well, like I said, those drunken lemurs had taken over the... Uh-huh. Seacliff, uh, but I got the cur... But... Close your little mouth. Let's go to my place. Come on, Eolani. Nice hut. Weren't you in a hurry? Okay, off with your clothes. My clothes? You don't think you'll look like a scientist in that, do you? Yeah, but... Why? Are you taking off... yours? Shut up, silly. And come here. What are you gonna do? <laughs> no... I'm not sure if this is... necessary. First rule of movie makeup artistry. 
The actor's face must be completely relaxed, and you are really tense. I know how to loosen you up, though. Just a minute there. You sure seem happy. Gina's disappeared. We don't even know whether she's alive, if she's a prisoner. Nothing. Hey, don't listen to that guy. You can't pass up an opportunity like this. You had to, so you didn't. Ignore him. It just doesn't seem right to me. And you hardly know that girl in there, and... Come on now. Didn't we talk about how there are times in life when you have to know how to say... Hey, <laughs> what the heck? Kaimi, get in here. When the times get tough, the tough get a little crazy. Stop messing around. We've got a lot of work to do. Oh. <laughs> Come on, sit down. I'll start by cutting your hair. No way. I've been letting it grow for months. Look, do you want to look like the guy in the picture or not? Yeah, but... But nothing. By the way, this may be a good time for you to explain why we're doing all this, don't you think? You're right. It's the least I owe you, but... Get ready, because it'll take a while. My friend Gina wanted to visit Mala Island, so this morning we woke up early to... Perfect. My former boyfriend Zobby's clothes fit you like they were tailor-made. Do Naguki's glasses bug you? No, we seem to have the same lens prescription. Yeah, his eyesight wasn't really that bad. But since he was a physics student and a boring, shy bookworm, they looked right on him. Uh, yeah, I know some guys like that. Well then... Wait a sec. That suitcase there used to belong to Hyun, my Korean ex. I threw some clothes in, just in case they examine your personal belongings when you enter the camp. Now you're just perfect. Oh, are you leaving already? Yeah, I have no time to waste. Goodbye and thank you for, uh... Everything. <laughs> Thanks to you, Kaimi. By the way, don't forget to tell Joshua to wait for me at Alawala Cove. And remember, when the real Pinon gets here... Don't worry. I'll know what to do. Yes. See you soon. Mwah. Bonjour. My name is Pierre Pinon. Yes, sir, but... Not that I don't trust you, sir, but you can never be careful enough. But of course, Sojo. Correct. Welcome, Professor. Marine Zachariah O'Connor, at your orders. I'm completely at your service, Professor. Is everything in order? Alors, to the camp! <laughs> So, I finally managed to infiltrate the military camp. In other words, the girl did a nice job on you. How do you know that? I mean, what job are you referring to? The makeup, silly. What else could I mean? Phew. Well, anyway, this... Lokelani took the cosmetics and some clothes to the bar, did my makeup real fast, and then afterwards I changed behind some bushes and... Okay, okay. I can tell there's something you don't want to tell me. Just explain what happened when you sneaked into the camp, will you? All right. It's a miracle I'm alive, Sushi. The whole thing made a 180 degree turn, and nothing had prepared me for what was waiting inside. What I did figure out fast was that they were desperately awaiting Pinon's arrival. No sooner did I set down the suitcase in my tent than O'Connor told me the Colonel was requesting to meet with him immediately. I tried not to get nervous. If Kordsmeyer recognized me, my fate could be sealed. And when I got to his tent, You look so different, Professor. 
I didn't remember you being so young. Ah, uh, you know, we French have the magnifique skin creams. Oh, you Europeans. Fancy a cigar? Havana's finest. Sent straight from Guantanamo by my old pal, Colonel Chesson. Uh, merci, but I uh, do not smoke. All the better for me, because I ain't got much tobacco left. My last shipment got dropped by parachute, but the wind blew it off course, and my men can't find it. You should to smoke un peu less, Monsieur le Colonel. I'm twice your age, Professor, so save your advice for the younger whippersnappers. Flower pot? Yes, my Colonel? Tell Chapman everything's ready. Send him in. Professor, I'm gonna put my cards on the table. They say you're the best contactor around since Simon retired. And if I remember right, you were his right-hand man in Operation Platypus Dream. Ah, uh, we oui. now I remember. That was so funny. A jolly good old time you had, huh? Ha! <laughs> Who could have known there'd be a rock slide right during the exchange? If they hadn't whipped out that amazing weapon, Simon already christened it as... What was it again? Ah, we. Oui. I began to remember. Truly magnifique. The NG-0. It vaporized those rocks instantaneously. That's what I call a weapon of mass destruction. Damn, we need one of those. Well, uh, I do not know if I have one, chez moi. Don't be silly, Professor. You're looking a bit too relaxed. I don't want you getting comfy. Like I said, I need you to activate the amoeba. And yes, I know Simon is the only man to achieve that from our side, but the old guy is M.I.A. In summation, we lost all contact with our guests, which makes us believe there have been technical difficulties. I don't want to spook you, but if we don't activate the amoeba soon, we could lose them forever. I assume you understand how serious this matter is. Sacré bleu, I imagine something like this. I can't quite figure out your accent, Professor. Louisiana? Moi? But I am French, Monsieur. Oh yeah, France. Great generals, the French. Julius Caesar, Napoleon, Don Quixote, Chapman. It's about time. Sir. Professor Pignon, this is Lieutenant Colonel Chapman, my second in command. He'll take you to your workspace and give you the procedural briefcase. You'll start working immediately, and I'll let you do so by yourself, as your damn agency's rules ordain. However, I'll be watching your progress up close, and I hope you bring me some good news soon. Open the amoeba, and everything will go just fine. This way, Professor. Careful with the stairs. Please don't fall behind, Professor. Okay, Professor, here you are. Ooh la la, c'est magnifique! This was the first room the archaeologists excavated. The public only had access to the Tiki Temple Room, and they made this room into their center of operations. It's shameful the way we evacuated them out of there, and with no prior warning or reasonable explanations. We used to act with decency and honor. Ah, uh, we oui, are, remember, with a major decency. I'll leave the procedural briefcase here for you. Inside the computer on that desk is all the information gathered about the amoeba by Simon in the past few years, before his sudden departure. Anyway, I know you're aware of this, but let me insist about the catalyzing glove. As you know, the original was accidentally broken during the dream of the hippocampus, and the budget to make this replica was more than all the lunar missions combined. So don't forget, protect that glove with your life. Do not worry, Monsieur Chapman. 
Merci for reminding me. Don't thank me. As you know, I merely obey orders I disapprove of. Well, Professor, I'll let you work. God help you. Au revoir. Hey, uh, Luke Lomi? How long do you say it take to pick me up? I hope long enough for me to get to know you, Professor. May I call you Piro? Yes, uh, but um, maybe I'd better head for the camp on my own, no? You could wait in my hut and change out of those sweaty clothes. Uh, that's a tempting offer, but... Oh, I mean a bit of an hour, and I... Uh... Silence. We m Kordsmeyer isn't saying anything, so I guess I passed the test. Hey, what is that? Could that be the amoeba Kordsmeyer's so uptight about opening? Must be something mighty special, because it's protected under a cube of glass like a museum piece. A ball with three holes in it. A bowling ball? I don't see what interest the army could have in a primitive bowling alley, even if it's the archaeological find of the millennium. The cube seems solid, and though it looks like glass, it's hot. In some way, this all reminds me of a petrified mosquito in a piece of amber I used to carry around as a good luck charm. My dear. This contraption will erase O'Connor's memory, and I can make him believe I am the actual Pignon. Better put on the sunglasses to make sure the blast doesn't neuralize me, too. Soldier O'Connor, stare at this object, please. Caddy, we'll talk later. Yeah, I'll keep it on Channel 5. Sir, yes, sir. Listen carefully. This is not a test, and I am not an MP. My name is Professor Pierre Pignon, and any memory you have to the contrary will now vanish forever. Oh, and from now on, you'll read no more weapons manuals, just Barbara Cartland romance novels. Whoa, sir, careful! Marble's falling at 6.30, sir! Now, that was unexpected. Anyway, is it clear who I am or not? Sir, yes, sir. But I'm not sure if I passed the test. Oh, man, it didn't work. Dang it, sir! I thought I was up to muster. Now what do I do with you, O'Connor? I'm all out of ideas. Do what you will, sir. I shall accept my punishment with honor and valor, sir. Wait a minute. Soldier, I'll give you one more chance to pass. Your task is to keep your mouth closed tight, and not to tell my true occupation to anyone, not even Kordsmeyer himself. Sir, thank you, sir. On my honor as a Marine, I will not let you down. Joshua, what's going on here? Brian, I can't telepathize at this exact moment. I'm operating on a boy. Boy? A uh, little demon is a lemur. A lemur? I knew such a smart guy could never be human. Well, it turns out the paddle slipped out of the other guy's hands, flew off and got stuck in this poor thing's teeth. It was a tragic scene. But luckily, I was on hand. This kid brought me a couple of packages filled with molar repair gadgets. So here I am trying to remove the paddle. Oh, you're familiar with dentistry? Not a thing. But we geniuses take advantage of our inquiring minds. Listen, you go out in the neighborhood and play, and let us fools get down to work. Negative. I'll protect him from himself. I'll clean things up and get rid of the sissies who are using him. We'd be hamburger devouring civilians who don't have the balls to grab a machete and cut the bull's head off. What the heck? 
This country was founded by generals, by soldiers. Calm down, little soldier. I'm with you. As long as you keep paying me what we agreed, that is. Tarantula, I've got some news. We think that spy is around here, in the camp. The signal ain't clear, but we're trying to zero in on him. Damn that two-bit civilian. Mobilize everyone. Let no one sleep until we catch him. Ha! <laughs> He's walked into the wolf's den. No doubt about it. He's in cahoots with that parachute girl. Gina! So don't repeat the same mistake as this morning. She jumped out over the lake. She had to be eliminated. She should have been captured and interrogated. Well, you can just forget about her. The underwater camera recorded footage of the girl sinking to the lake bottom. She's not talking to anyone anymore. No, it can't be. Gina can't be dead. No way. My experience tells me she isn't so easy to get rid of. She got shot by some Mafia thugs and managed to escape. And I myself ran over her with my car on accident. And once again she escaped the grips of death. She even fell into a really deep well. And she hardly scraped her leg. And now... Well, maybe I'm wishing on a star here, but Joshua says that the alien spacecraft is at the bottom of the lake. And considering the way things stand, maybe what he said is true. It seems nuts, but I think my only way out is to help him find Professor Simon. Gina doesn't deserve for me to give up. I'll have to act carefully, however. If I heard things right, they think I'm a spy and they're hot on my trail. And don't mess up again, doll. Don't be afraid of him, my little fridges. The day I grow tired of him, <laughs> you'll see. Oh, you're all so lovely. Angelina, Agostina, Andrina, Agrippina. Sure, that plan should work, and Adelina will run in the right direction. Even I can smell where that icky stench is all is emanating from. Let's just cross our fingers and hope everything works out. Come on, Adelina. Use that keen sense of smell and head for that aromatic delight. A spider! Adelina! Stop her! Yikes! She crawled into that hole! Move out of my way, you amateurs! Now's the time. I better hurry if I don't want those goons to catch me down there. Adelina, my lovely... Hey, wait! My twins! Action! Finally, I get a piece of the action! Oh, Connor, do you copy? Gosh, Caddy, you are one royal pain! Soldier O'Connor, it's me, Colonel Basco, your intelligence service examiner. Oh, sorry, sir. I thought you were a moron. Uh, whatever. I just wanted to say you've passed all of the test stages satisfactorily. Except the most important one. Oh man, I met this moron friend of mine, sir. Just listen. You are to enter into the ruins screaming. My colonel, Professor Pignon, has run off toward the lake. I'll hop to it, my colonel. Run, soldier, run! Where in tarnation's he gone? Calm down, Nathan. He'll turn up sooner or later. Pignon has run to the lake, my colonel! Follow me. Down we go! Wait. I heard something. Come on! Come on! Come on! Run, Joshua! Hey, what's the big rush? Joshua! Hold on tight! No 
where does Simon live? Alaska! Alaska? They're getting away, my lady. I'm real sorry. You won't be for long. Brian, if anyone else were telling me this, I'd never believe it. Me neither, Sushi. The whole part about the amoeba is astounding. No, I was talking about Joshua. How could he be such a klutz? Sometime I'll tell you about the mess he made in our room. In your room? Yeah, when we left Mala, we passed by the hut I'd rented with Gina. I didn't have a cent on me since the plane crash. And I needed to pick up some money and clothes for the trip to Alaska. By plane again, I suppose? Only as far as Anchorage. Then we hopped on a train to Fairbanks, and after that a bus to Sicily, where this nice man offered to take us as close to our final destination as he could on his snowplow. And you finally met Professor Simon. We still had to walk a ways through a snowy no man's land, but that wasn't our final challenge. Even worse was that Joshua was starving. His voracious appetite almost put an end to our little adventure. We were looking at the doors of Simon's house when... Almost there. Professor Simon will give us something to eat. Thank goodness we made it. The sun's going down. Mm, these berries look delicious. <laughs> Who is it? Hello, my name's Brian Basco. I need to speak with Professor Simon. The man who knows does not speak. What? Excuse me, are you James Simon? Please, listen. I have a very important message for you. Not interested. Hey! I think I forgot to mention, you have to say a password before I let you in. A password? Of course you didn't say anything. Let's see, what could that darn password be? And quit eating those berries, they could be poisonous. Hey, leave that alone. Tell me the password once and for all. You see, Professor Simon will say who knows what about the man who knows. And you have to answer him. Yes, you must tell him. Oh dear, I'm feeling dizzy. I knew those berries would make you feel sick. Come on, just make a bit of an effort to remember the password and you'll be able to recover inside the professor's house. I believe it was something like... Oh no, I'm sorry. I can't remember. It's all right, calm down. When we were coming up here, I saw a shelter by a lake. We'll go up there, and I'm sure you'll remember that password after a bit of rest. Come on, I'll help you. Joshua, pay attention! Grab it! I've got to get that nutcase off the icy lake. Perfect! This is working! I'll get Joshua's monk outfit from the shelter. He should be wearing it when we go to Professor Simon's house. If they see him in his regular clothes, they won't let us in, even with the password. Here, Joshua. Well, 
here we go. The man who knows does not speak. The man who speaks doesn't know. Come in. Don't be afraid of the dogs. Come on, chop chop. What about those nuts? <laughs> those barking dogs? Just one of Simon's MP3s. And I thought I wouldn't live to tell the story, but I had a stroke of luck and managed to escape through the amoeba. My dear friend, you've displayed some exemplary courage by confronting Kordsmeyer. And as for you... My name is Joshua, and I'm starving! I see. Alpha spoke to me of you, the human who lives among Trantorians. You are quite lucky. My stomach's growling with hunger! As is mine, dear friend. Though it's the hunger for knowledge which makes us scientists. I think my legs are going to give out! Joshua, we're short on time, and I haven't even figured out what those Trantorians are doing here. You are new to the field, then. Please, take a seat. Trantor, an ancient and distinguished planet, more than 60 light eons from our own. Let me tell you, if you thought the walk up here was far... Its inhabitants had already dominated quantum technology before the first single-celled being sprouted to life on Earth. What he means is they already had some awesome wares running when our ancestors were riding in Stein. They learned to model the space-time continuum at their whim, to leap from galaxy to galaxy, to alight onto dimensional vortices in a purely tangential manner. In a word, their travel budget was out of this world. Their telepathic mastery is such that they could dispense with their mere physical presence, should that be their whim. Ooh, not even scullery thought of that! As you are aware, their civilization is beyond ours by an exponentially awe-inspiring amount. They do seem to be pretty quick. They could effortlessly make slaves of whole solar systems and shrink them infinitesimally with nothing but a thought. Their brains could fly our sorry bodies into a heap of atoms. Buckles the mind, huh? Yet all that seems to interest them is an intergalactic zoo. He means the only... a what? A zoo? Fascinating, is it not? They trek throughout the universe collecting animals and take them to a planet three times larger than Earth. An immense zoological collection where ecosystems from extremely distant galaxies and eras coexist. During the journey, they put the animal into an induced slumber, which they refer to as the dream. Sounds like they've been keeping some info from me. Furthermore, they've been coming to Earth since the dawn of time. And though they actually need no one, they have made us all stakeholders in their enterprise. The truth is, I don't quite get it. A time came at which Earth's technological development made it difficult for Trantorians to go unnoticed. And therefore, they contacted our most eminent scientists to reach an agreement. We would protect them when visiting, conceal them from the public eye, and supply them with animals. In exchange, they would provide us with some of their knowledge and most advanced technology. What a deal! Yes, my friend. Don't you find it unbelievable that mankind has carried out the technological revolution of the 20th century with no help? Had Trantor failed to furnish us with knowledge, theories, and prototypes, we would never have gotten so far. Think of heretofore unconceivable vaccines, the space race, or even the vacuum tubes in the first computer. And you are thinking of Trantor. I knew that. And the first jellyfield donut. They told me so. Astounding, isn't it? As I was saying, we trade animals for wisdom. The Earthling entity responsible for coordinating these efforts is the Contactor's International Agency, of which I myself was a member until recently. Until Kordsmeyer appeared, I suppose. Precisely. During the dream of the platypus. We were waiting for the Trantorians in a cave in Cuba Petty, Australia, when the rocks in the ceiling started raining down on us. It looked like our days were numbered. Right at that moment, a Trantorian appeared through an amoeba point carrying a small sphere in his hand. The NG0, an antiparticle generator that reduces all sorts of matter to nothing. He raised it up and aimed it at the rocks, and they disappeared instantaneously, as if they'd never existed. Since then, Kordsmeyer has been awfully interested in the NG0. He even ordered me to ask the Trantorians for it. When I refused, he tried to have me eliminated. 
so I was forced to leave my position and flee to this dull hideout. Surrounded by safety measures with passwords known only by Alpha, Trantor's High Commissioner for Earthling Affairs, and now you, of course. So what we know is that Quartzmire has managed to get a Trantorian spaceship into trouble. At least enough for it to risk sending a message through Joshua. Whoops! With all this chit-chat, I forgot about the message! Yes, Simon? What is that? Let us join hands, and then you will see. Joshua put a lid on it! Silence! Professor Simon, are you okay? Just give me a minute or two. I need to warm up. Aren't you hungry too? Holy smokes! We have to keep the Trantorians from giving the NG-0 to Kordsmeyer for sure. In the wrong hands, that weapon could destroy a city the size of Los Angeles in tenths of a second. Dear friends, we must travel to Palenque to find the Trantonite immediately. Or we can begin to say farewell to the world as we know it. You can count on me, Professor. And on Joshua, of course. I bet you're just real hungry, Professor Simon. Hey, why don't we call that sushi guy? Good thinking. May I use your phone? It isn't a safe way to communicate, given the circumstances. 
Do you mind if I ask why? I know of a friend who could help us out. Someone we fully trust. Magnificent. Then I recommend you sit at my laptop computer and use the impenetrable ultra-safe crypto chat. Provided that your friend is online at this very moment, that is. Don't worry. If there were one person online in the whole world, it'd be Sushi Douglas. Well, I am clueless about the online chatting. Of course, since Tranto is all about telepathic talk. Hey, Sushi, are you there? Do you mean that the Trantorians don't have the internet? How do you think Alpha informs us of trading dates, if not by email? In fact, after reading their email, we type in www.planet-trantor.com and we enter our code so that they will provide us with the details of the transaction. I'm totally out of the loop! Nobody told me about any of this! You leave me in awe, my dear friend. If not, where do you believe the network of all networks was designed? In the mind of a simple human? No, it was them who showed us how to build it and use it. What I've never understood is how they get online from other solar systems. I don't know. Perhaps they use neutrino transducers, like in that splendid novel by William Garza. Have you got that one? That book must have gotten at least five stars! You wouldn't happen to have anything by Sarah Martin, would you? Nathan? What's up, doll? Think you'll ever find our little pest? Hush, hush, soldier boy. My spiderweb is about to strangle both him and the monk. And it looks like we got three for the price of two. Your old pal Simon's here. Simon? Ha! I knew I'd end up catching him. Overeducated scientist. Anyway, make him vanish and come to Mala Pronto, lady. Have you already gotten the real Pignon to cooperate? I know how to make up his mind. The clock's ticking before the big event. K. Dick, all of Asimov, and of course, Brian Scullery's complete works. Yuck! What are you doing with that gossipy pop in your library? Allow me to tell you a secret. If you tug on the third volume of his infamous UFO Lies and the Houdini Legacy, you'll see something open up before your feet. A at Simon's house. And that's where my story ends, for now. Sounds like quite an adventure, but you can count on me. What do you want me to do? Think about it, shrimp. While you pull the trigger, I'll stick my finger up the barrel. My fingers get blown off, but the force of the opposite reaction will make the bullet shoot backwards. At a speed nine times faster, it'll blow up the gun and your face will get erased. Seriously? I knew you were an idiot. I'm gonna kill him! No one ordered you to do it, Thirteen. They're not paying you for this one. It's the ones inside they want. Well, get a move on before my Christmas shopping begins. <laughs> Did that spy from Hawaii turn up yet? Not yet, Tarantula. This is getting a bit tiresome. They've been in there for hours. All right, Eighteen, finish off the other two. Then we'll go in and get the spy. Which one should I take out first? The clown? No. The old geezer is more important. What are you waiting for? Houdini's legacy, Joshua. Brian, go after him. What about you? I'll be fine. Everything depends on you now. Run! But jump for Pete's sake! Find that stone! Find it! Brian? Are you there? Brian? Something's wrong. We have to leave immediately. Saturn, we're going on a trip. Brian's in trouble. BB in trouble? Give me five minutes. You're not leaving me here, are you, man? 
and bring your best equipment. We may need it. Four minutes! I'll go grab some equipment too, but the good stuff! You're gonna fly when you see it, man! Huh? Where am I? A boat? Man, I ache all over. And that light! Just a sec. Hold on, give me a minute here. Let's see. I escaped with Joshua on Simon's snowmobile. We got as far as Sicily, and from there to Anchorage, where we hopped on a flight to San Diego, since we were supposed to meet Sushi there, and, and then, I, I don't know. I can't remember anything else. Truth is, I feel like I've been asleep for three days. Joshua's missing, and what in the world am I supposed to do now? Sushi! Brian! You finally woke up. It's amazing to see you again. No, I'm the one who's excited. So how are you feeling? Well, a bit nervous, because besides the whole Gina problem, the soldiers and the Trantonite, I can't even remember how I got here. The truth is, I don't even know where we are. Ha ha ha. I got here this morning. But from what Rutger told me about last night, I'm not surprised your memory is shot. And as for the Trantonite, everything has been fixed. You don't have to worry about a thing. What? Let me explain. It turns out that a man flying in some bizarre device was painted inside a tomb within the ancient Mayan ruins of Palenque. It's so weird, it looks like a spaceship. So much so that people call it the astronaut of Palenque. As soon as I found out, I took off for Palenque. The stone has to be there. The first thing they told me when I got there is that the tomb was robbed more than five centuries ago. Five centuries! Finding the stone was going to be impossible. Luckily, they gave me a hot contact, Paco, a Spanish student obsessed with the whole topic. And he just happened to be working at the temple ruins then. So nobody knows where it might be now? I mean, whatever was inside that tomb? Don Inigo de Malentunes y Gagnon. Search for him. Where can I find him? No idea. Probably at the bottom of the sea since he was one of the cruelest pirates of the 16th century. Nobody knows how his galleon, the Orion, managed to survive the harshest tempests, or come out unscathed from battles with much better armed vessels. Legend even has it that his ship's figurehead shined like the sun. However, his sailors assured it was all thanks to a lucky charm made of stone. An awesome object that Malentunes supposedly found in his youth. And now you're going to tell me the miraculous item came from that robbed grave, right? You are right. I've been researching, and it appears that as a kid, Captain Malentunes worked for the conquistador Hernán Cortés. He had the bad fortune of falling in love with Malinche, who was none other than his commander's lover. Cortés challenged him to a duel, ripped out his eye, and left him in the jungles of Chiapas fewer than 30 miles from the city of Palenque. So you're suggesting that Malentunez stole something from the grave, which protected him for the rest of his life? 
Very interesting. But how can I find his trail? There's evidence that in 1564, he stole the map of the Manila route, the Spanish crown's best kept treasure. It could have made him richer than the king himself. After that, his trail is lost. Perhaps he set sail for the Philippines. But if you're so interested, why don't you go look in the archives of the Indies? In this isle, you'll find everything you need about galleons, which disappear from 1560 to 1570. Look for whatever you want, and don't worry about making noise. I'll be alone tonight. I searched through book after book, galleon after galleon, and pirate after pirate until... Captain Malantunez of the Orion. That was it. I found a short passage of what seemed to be Malantunez's memoirs, taken down by a female prisoner who was with him. On the last pages, his scribe wrote that an English boat had sunk the Orion, and after being rescued, this record keeper went on and on about what a scoundrel Malantunez was. Lucky for us, the date of the shipwreck is mentioned. March 6th, 1564. Six days after the Orion set sail on a journey from Acapulco to Manila. I had everything I needed to locate the approximate position of the galleon. So I checked maps from those days, did some calculations, and finally managed to determine an exact point in the Pacific... Done. Good luck, boys. Yeah, good luck to everyone. A and to me, too. Look at them. There are the neutrinos. They're shooting up from down there to the left. Sushi, fire the engines and set our course to north-northwest. Okay, turn starboard just a few degrees. Look at that thing coming! Stay the course, Sushi. We're headed in the right direction. Drop anchor, Sushi. We're right on top of it. Sorry, Brian. Chacho, amazing title you have come up with for this new Dean Grassic adventure. Blast to the past.
Those millions invested in the three-dimensional scanner were worth it. Well done, Brian. Hop in, and we'll decide where to attack. Lichens. Either we get rid of them and the moss, or we'll never get it open. You know what you have to do, right? Is it that hard, Brian? You're not gonna tell me the dirt is really stuck to the surface, are you? No luck? No? No! Let's see. Go down into it as far as you can. Now, move toward the bow. At the end of the hall, you'll find some stairs. Go past them. Now stand facing aft. Do you see a trap door? Go up through it. Roger. You'll reach a passageway with several doors. The one closest to the bow has to be Malentunia's cabin. Trust Saturn's little inventions, but what choice is there? Any match for me with this crowbar. The Transonite awaits me.
for the grand ball, me lady. Wenches first. Are you gonna be making me walk the plank? Aye, aye, you sad mutt. But chin up. In recompense, you'll be meeting the bravest Hidalgo who hath hoisted the Jolly Roger. Don Inigo de Maratunes y Goñor. Captain, the line is ready. It's about time, Husky Hound. Shackle you. Attacking! And your post, dog. At last. I, the great Freshian Barskov, captain of the Interfector, have achieved... Holy Toledo, it's a blaze! Give me your sword, you filthy dog. Uh-oh. Ah! What in the world? Stop, you traitor! What are you done with the beacon, you English cur? Tossed it into the tempestuous waters I have. Tossed into the sea? You'll pay for this. And you can consider yourself dead. Because I, the great Russian Barskov, captain of the Interfector, have managed to put a stop to your unstoppably Grushion! By Satan's horns! Get away from me! Was it me you wanted? Uh, are you okay, monsieur? Milady. Never in my life have I felt so pleasantly unburdened, as though a huge weight were taken off my shoulders. Oh, mon dieu! Russian! Russian! Prayon! Prayon! Wake up, Brian! Good day, milady. You're alive! Is that not normal? Considering you fainted inside the galleon and Camille had to pull you up to the surface, it's almost a miracle. Camille? Aha! When you went into the stateroom, some furniture fell on you and blocked the entrance. Luckily, I made it in through a side window and got you out. Gee, thanks a lot, Camille. I owe you one. W what about the tram tonight? I couldn't look for it while you were drowning. I hardly had enough time to push a huge vase off you and rush out. A vase? Yes. It looked Chinese or something. Wait a minute. The train tonight! Sushi, I'm going down to the galleon. But... Attention, everyone! What is that? I said shut up! Thanks to my four-digit IQ and this amazing contraption which I myself have invented, I can accurately pinpoint the Trantonite's coordinates out of everywhere in the whole universe! You never guess in a trillion years, but it's... Right underneath us? Ah! No fair mind reading! Anyway, it's hidden in an unimaginable spot that only a genius like myself could... In a Ming spittoon? Ah! Boy, has this kid learned some major telepathy, thanks to me. Boggles the mind, huh? So now what, Brian? Hey, we can finish up this business in two seconds! We hand the Trentonite over to Alpha, the Trentorians vaporize the bad guys, and we're out of here! Uh, I don't know if I have time to prepare the materials. What materials? The party materials. Cause we have to celebrate, no? Of course. 
I'll build a self-slicing seven and a half story cake so we can try out the watch fork. Hey, those Trantorians have some finger-licking good crackers. You'll see. Crackers? I love dunking those in orange juice. Brian, are you okay? No. Well, cheer up for the party, cause... There isn't gonna be any party. Yet. This is just the beginning. Everything we've been through on Mala Island, in the Tiki Temple, and Alaska. It's all just a tiny appetizer compared to the main dish we have coming. To begin with, does anyone know how to get to the lake? Those soldiers are guarding it on every front. And they've even installed security cameras inside and out. We can't get near the Trentorian ship without being caught. And if they see us, a whole regiment armed to the teeth will be there for the welcoming ceremony. If Kordsmar wants to finish us all off, he'll do so without flinching. He'll stop at nothing until he can get Pinyon to open the amoeba, and then nothing will get between him and the NG-0. And Kordsmeyer's not our only problem. No, that colonel may be psycho, but at least he has his ideals. The one I'm really afraid of is Tarantula. She doesn't believe in anything, which makes her totally unpredictable. Coming face to face with her is like a death sentence. Plus, she hangs out with a gang of mercenary thugs who will have no qualms about slicing and dicing us to make spider food. You have an ace up your sleeve, though. Your friends on the island. Maybe they can help us. Maybe, but we don't even know if they're still on Mala Island, or if they've escaped, or, well, I'd rather not think about the other possibilities. And speaking of aces up sleeves, what about Kordsmeyers? He has a Trantorian, a fifth columnist he calls John Doe, who we know nothing about. But because of his position and technological knowledge, he may be the most dangerous person on the face of the earth. It's too much. I can't take it all, but I can't ask you guys to help me either. You can count on me, Brian. And on me, man. All for one and one for all, BB. Yeah! We'll smash those villains and rescue the girl! Oh, Gina. Why in the world did we get into that plane? This all seems impossible. Look at me. Look at all of you. Not you, Joshua. Do we have any chance at all of defeating a whole army? None. You're wrong, my dear friend. There is one. Professor Simon? Wait, how did... You have a new ally on your team now.
My last test to make it into intelligence. Getting the cigar box back from Colonel Kordsmeyer. It's an unusual mission that only a soldier with my valor and loyalty could accomplish. Nobody knows what dastardly dangers I might come up against, or how I'll escape from them, but I accept my mission with honor and courage. Banzai! Juji! Onegai itashimasu! What the devil? Well, well. We have a visitor. This is starting to get fun. Ka eru no utaga, kiko etekun.